Got it. Okay. Back and forth a little. Jill, ready? Go. Greetings, friends. Fall, autumn. It's just around the corner. And at this time of year, as we start preparing for the cooler season to come, we also start thinking about things that need to be done around here to get ready for the fall and winter seasons. And part of that process is also thinking about and planning the projects that we're gonna do for this time of year. And one of the projects that I have been really wanting to do for some time now is to build a storage overhang area to protect our tools and different things from the weather, especially with, with fall coming around and maybe even snow at winter time, I definitely wanna start doing a better job of taking care of my tools. Tools like my lawn tractor, mini cultivator, and all the different garden tools that we use here around the homestead, I wanna get them in a covered area so that they won't rust and that way we'll be able to use them for a lot longer period of time. And they'll have a home. Yeah. So you can say, go put it away. That's instead right. Instead of just, hey, where's the shovel? Yeah, a designated <laughs> area. So we had planned to do an overhang build off of this building right here, a warehouse. And to start that project, we recently got it started by first leveling out the ground here to pour a concrete pad. And the reason for doing a concrete pad is because the roof building an overhang will keep the rain off the tools from above, but I also want to have the ground dry underneath of where our tools are being stored. And also I don't want to be walking in in mud or anything trying to get our tools. So that's this project that we have planned for right here. And there's another big project going on here on the homestead, but on the other side of the property. But it's not our project, especially my dad and my brother's project of uh, bringing a wood drying kiln down here so they can dry lumber for people. So Because if you, if you just fresh cut your lumber, it needs to be dry before you use it so it doesn't warp. So, and that can take a long time and a kiln will just rapidly speed up that process. And they also were planning to pour a concrete pad for that project as well. So we decided, hey, let's just team up and let's pour concrete together and just work together on both projects. Right. So the day came and it was time to pour the concrete for both projects. And since they needed to pour a lot more concrete because where they're pouring, the area is much, much bigger for their wood kiln area compared to our, just our tool storage area, we started with their area first. So thankfully we had a number of helping hands for these two projects that we were pouring concrete for. And things were moved as the concrete was coming out of the truck. We were spreading it out and putting it into the areas that we needed it. Things were just moving. until it came time to screed it and our vibrating screeding machine wasn't working. <laughs> yeah, they go to pull it to start it and they pull it and the recoil broke so uh, we couldn't start it. Oh. And so we had to do everything by hand or I should say they had to do everything by hand. And with screeding, the main purpose of that is to flatten out the concrete as you're pouring it and spreading it out and make sure it's nice and smooth and level at the proper grading that you want your concrete to be at. So since the machine wasn't working, her brother Hazen and I had to do it by hand. We did the screeding by hand. Got it. Okay, back and forth a little, Jill, ready? Go. Don't push down on it. You just pull right up the pocket for it. Just pull that way. You want to pull in that direction. Go back and forth. Yep. Okay. So I'll pull fast. You want to stay with me. Okay. Yeah. 
basically going back and forth, back and forth. And man, <laughs> let me tell you, it was a workout for us this <laughs> no day. Doubt. Not only worked your abs, it worked your arms, your biceps, and your shoulders, and you, you gotta work together too. So it's like we're communicating, listening to each other as we were working together on screen. And on top of that, it was super hot. It, it was, was super hot. We didn't couldn't get concrete till the middle of the day, and it was putting everybody to the test. <laughs> Drag it one time, turn it a little bit of angle like this. Watch me pull this way, get on this side of it like I am. Okay. Okay, drag it. Yep. Drag it again. Scream. Me, go. It sure was, and let me tell you, throughout this day, a number of us got tested a number of times where we were like, oh, is such a shut's gonna pass out? Oh, is such a shut's gonna pass out? But we just kept moving. So as Hazen and I were screening, Sailor was using, I don't know if it's a float or an edger to work along the sides. And I'm gonna need help with some of these tools because I didn't grow up like you did with masonry a part of your life. Since that was your dad, that has been his business pretty much his whole life, right? Yeah, pretty much. And something that was a big part of yours too because you work with him. Yeah. I did work with him too for during, mason, during the masonry stuff, but I only did it for like a year or so, but you had yeah. a number of years in it. So what tool was yeah. she using when she did it? She was using an edger. There was one time she was using a float too, so. So it's neat to see her have a helping hand in this long time family business that yeah. you have. And guys learn have from my dad, you know? I got to learn from my dad. My yeah. daughter gets to learn from my dad. It's there we go. Cool. Just get to pass those things on. So as right. she was doing that, I believe he was using the big float. Is that what it's called? Yes. So, yes. and that basically just adds another level of smoothness to the concrete. Smoothness. <laughs> yeah. You need to smooth it out to make sure there's not gravel sticking up. That's right. So it's a number of processes involved to kind of get the concrete the way you want it to be. Yes. So we got about two thirds done with one half of that area that we were working on for their concrete pad before we switched the machine over the chute of the concrete truck over so we could pour some more concrete because if we would have poured the whole of one side it would have been very hard to get to the back of the other half. Of Actually the wouldn't have been able to because so. the form wasn't even up in the beginning and the concrete truck was part of the way in the slab so, so couldn't even do it. We switched over to the other half and poured that side and that was all the concrete for that first truck. And right as the second truck got here, one of my other older brothers showed up and uh, it was a relief because we were, it was, it was getting 
really fast paced and we needed some more hands and Josh is super experienced with concrete so he hopped in and helped out everywhere he could. We definitely needed his help because <laughs> uh, we're not experienced as he has been with con pouring concrete so he was but definitely also nice the to heat have. was drying it out so fast yeah. and if you don't get stay on top of concrete you'll lose it and then you'll lose the whole slab and nobody wants that. <laughs> So after we poured that area, screeded that area, he brought out this, uh, I forgot what it's called, it's like a fan machine where he was going over the concrete. A finishing yeah, machine. That, that's what it is, there a finishing go. machine to kind of, what is that, just add another level of, of smoothness, but yeah, maybe a little it, texture? Well, no, it doesn't put texture on it, uh, but it makes it really smooth. And then at this point, I think everybody was feeling the heat to one degree or another, and it was definitely taking its toll, but we had to keep pushing forward because we had to get this job yeah. done. So after we worked on that area, then we moved over here to start pouring our concrete for our storage area. And for pouring that concrete, the concrete truck was not able to get over here to pour it with the chute. So your dad had to use the skid steer as the concrete truck would pour down the chute into the bucket of the skid steer and he would drive the skid steer over here and dump it as Hazen and I were just moving the concrete around, moving it around. Finally got the concrete where we needed it to be here in this area. Then we had to screed it once again. And then after we were screeding it, done screeding this area, man, I, I, had, I, I may have had a smile on my face, but I needed to take a timeout. I had to go take a 10 minute timeout to regroup so I didn't get nauseous and pass out or anything. It was so hot. But got there, I regrouped. I got a second win and I was good for the rest of the day. Yeah.
So as I was taking my breather, Jesse, one of your dad's employees, was over here with the other finisher that we have, finishing this concrete. And then, after I was like, all right, I'm ready to go again, I came back over and they let me use the finisher for my first time. I think that was my first time. And the handles, the controls on that are, are really different. It's like, you don't control like this side to side. You're like, go up and down to go left and right. So yeah. that's pretty interesting. So it was getting close to the very end and we thought the kids would like putting their handprints in the concrete up here. You know, everybody likes to do that. So we attempted to do that, but it was already dried out so much because it was just so hot and you know drying out so fast that they, they really don't look like very good handprints. Yeah, yeah. With the temperatures being mid 90s and the humidity up there, it was just everything was drying out or sweating out yeah, for sure, for <laughs> the sure. whole day. So we got everything finished, everything dried really quickly, and the next morning we got up and it was really nice to see both areas finished, concrete just looking beautiful, exactly the way that we wanted it to be. That's so, right. And we were done. We're done. done. No more sweating everything out of it. No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it was a long day, but we accomplished what we set out to do. Yes. So guys, stay tuned. We got some more to do to build our storage area here for our tools, but the concrete pad is poured. Now we just got to construct the overhang for it. So that's a project for another time. <laughs> <laughs>